So this episode of Smartphone Anime is kind of exactly what's wrong with the series in a sense. Now, I think at the end of this episode, I think the payoff for what we got was pretty good. But I still think kind of like the way we got there was kind of like atypical. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think that... I've said this over and over. I am just happy that with the fact that we're getting a season two, that we got a season two. But I feel like they kind of fumbled the ball. I feel like, you know, in another world, my smartphone season one was something special. It was like an isekai anomaly, essentially. It was something that definitely was like the first of its kind as far as like this like uh, popcorn anime that I call, which is basically like junk food anime, which in turn is what normal people on YouTube will tend to call like trash isekai and stuff. But really, you know, most of it isn't trash. It's just basically not something that's like masterpiece level written, right? It's not your Attack on Titans. It's not your Demon Slayer. It's not your Horror Mia. It's not your your my dress up darling or something it's it's something that's like a little different and more akin to like you know sword art and stuff like that to where it's like it's if you start to break it down it's not like traditionally good but it's really enjoyable to watch and in that sense it is really good and i would put in another world my smartphone season one kind of in that ballpark but you know in season two i feel like they're kind of dropping the ball a little bit now I'll kind of walk you through what I mean and why I said that. So originally we start off with where we left off last week, which was the the prince, the second prince once again landed on, on Toya's doorstep. Uh, he needs to now go denounce the first prince and see how, on how he can basically get the first prince to take over that kingdom. So then that way he can marry Sue, mind you, again, a nine or ten year old uh, girl at this time who is going to in, in, in basically put into his harem. Now, before I move on, bef uh, you know, beyond that, too, I did want to hit on this one thing that I want to make sure that I mention is he continually even even at the end of this episode, right? He gets the OK, he gets the green light to marry Sue. He's going to do that. And again, he tells Sue, just like the other girls, that he has to wait till he's 18 before he can marry them. So basically, he's going to be marrying all these nine girls uh, when he turns 18. Mind you, it doesn't matter what their age is. He's just completely helping on them needing to be 18. Now, I don't know if that's how it is in the in the manga, the light novel, the source material. But in, in this show, he needs to wait until he's 18 to be able to do it. So he has to wait. He's 15 now. He has to wait three more years before he can marry any of the any of the nine girls. Now, most of them, you know, aren't going to be like some of them right now are like Sue, like nine or 10, 10 years old. Uh, you know, we, we have Yumina, who's 12 or 13 years old at this point, and the other girls are 14, 15 years old as well. So by the time he's 18, most of them are going to be, you know, by, between the ages of 13, 15, 14, 17. Maybe one of them will be 18 at this point. And then you have the fairy girl who's like 400 years old, but he's still hell-bent on needing to be 18, which is just such a silly concept because it's actually worse it's better for him if he did it now and just kind of like got it all out the way because he'd be marrying all these girls while he's still, you know, in his mind, I guess, or whatever, a minor still. But as opposed to when he waits until he's 18, it actually becomes, you know, in the eyes of, uh, I guess, Japanese law or, you know, the law we have now, you know, it would technically be illegal or something. But even in Japan, their consent is like 16. So technically, only see wait a year. It's all just messed up. It's just some weird arbitrary number that he threw out there at us, the viewers, uh, which just continually bothers me. Uh, he then he has a whole thing where he basically he gets the he we basically get this major storyline where the the second prince uh, is a piece of crap. He has he has slaves. He has slave callers. Of course, Toya frees the slaves. Of course, Toya finds out that the first prince isn't actually the first prince. He's actually the prince of or he's actually the the son of the of the prime minister of that country who's been manipulating the king the whole time with his uh, with his first wife or his first mistress or whatever. And he has her somewhere. So basically the king has just been a puppet of the prime minister. And the prime minister has this really fat-ass chick that he, he slept with. And he had this, this son who passed on that it's actually the king's son. But this queen of the king is actually been sleeping with the prime minister. It's all messed up. But he finds out this whole entire thing. He basically debacles the whole entire thing. And then the first prince, the first technical prince, the second prince in, in this case, is now the first prince, and he gets the whole kingdom. And then he puts a whole entire... Uh, he puts him in his uh, harem of royals, uh, of royal royalty men. And now he has another country in his 
in his wheelhouse of power, you know, essentially here. So, again, another atypical episode. It was okay. I didn't really, like, have a great time watching it. I just I just watched it. I was like, is what it is. It was just like, okay, things happen exactly like I thought they would. It was just a very okay episode overall. 5 out of 10, easy. Not my favorite episode. Again, I'm happy the anime's back. It'll, you know, I'm happy that it's here. I've loved most of the episodes. I'll say half of the episodes I think are really good. Half the episodes are, are really, really bad. Uh, and I think it's it feels really rushed at the same time. But I just want more of Babylon. I want more uh, adventures. And I'm just getting this. I don't know. I'm just not satisfied with what I'm getting. And I know maybe some people are. And that's totally okay. I just think eight episodes in. I want to see a little bit more for this anime. We only have four left. So I know I'm going to be left disappointed. But hey, it's going to get dubbed. And it's going to be a decent continuation of the first season. And that should be good enough. And Sue, officially, welcome to the harem. All right, that's my review of episode number eight. Uh, guys, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Sorry for this video being late. I've been moving. As you see, my whole entire setup behind me here is all drastically and wildly different. So uh, I'm getting acclimated here. So the videos this week will not be late, but this one definitely, definitely was. But let me know your thoughts on episode eight in the comments. And of course, I'll see you guys next week for episode nine. And hopefully, my cross fingers is a lot better. All right, peace.